good to see you back here once again for door number three of our Crafters Companion Advent Calendar. And welcome to, uh, well, my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. I hope you've been enjoying what you've been seeing the last couple of days or nights, depending when it is that you've been watching each of the videos. But this one it is all about, of course, door number three and what's behind door number three and what we're going to be making from behind door number three. Um, while you're here, for those of you that are new or relatively new, while you're here across from my Crafters Companion YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you're going to keep coming back. So with the thought of you doing that, please do subscribe. Do subscribe, and then, of course, I'll be popping up on your YouTube. However, what you can do is hit that bell notification. So every single time one of these new, brand new tutorials pop up, whether it is, of course, the advent calendar or whether it is just generic tutorials that I love to do, as soon as I upload them there, then you're going to be notified, of course. And then when it comes to each video, if you do like it, give me a thumbs up as well, because it does all help. I'd be surprised how much actually it does help. The things I've learned, the things I've learned. But anyway, enough about that. This is about our advent calendar. Let's dive straight in. Have a look. See what we've got from door number three here. Let's open it up. So if we go straight in here and let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's just go in a little bit. There we go. Where we can then open up our calendar and see what we've got right let's go in so there was number one there was number two so we're now looking for number three which for me i've just spotted it right now which is down into there so let's get in there open it up what we've got we have got stamps three stamps and two dies. So let me set them out the way just for now and then I'll bring them back in in a moment or two where we can look at them in a little bit more detail. So we do have our floral bouquet. So let's bring it in. So our gorgeous little floral here. Bring in a bit of card for you to see. So we've got that watering can with the flowers. We've also then got our heart and also our flower. That you can see here and then not only that we've got some of the dies to go with them as well you've got all of that stamp and dies that we can then of course right let's bring these ones into place let's move them out the way here and then we're going to we're going well of course we're going to do some coloring but what we're going to do is we're going to be using our aqua pens but we're not going to be doing any water blending or anything like that we're just going to use them as sole coloring mediums so before we get our layers lined up let's go through what we've got we've got marigold we've got scarlet we've got slate we've got evergreen Bud green, magenta, and crimson. So that's from our aqua pens. And then what I'm also going to use, instead of going around with an ice grey too, I've taken my illustrator pen and I've used pearl blue, which is TB1. We're going to use that as well. But what I want to do first and foremost is I want to get my layers cut because we're going to create a background. And there's no point stamping and colouring areas that we're not going to see. So let's get all of these to what the size that we need. White multi-purpose cardstock here. Because although it's an aqua pen, we're not doing anything water-based. So we're just going to go direct on and colour. So I'm going to cut that one to four and a half by four and a half inches that we can see here. And then I'm also going to cut another piece that is three, I want to say about three and, I'm going to do about three and a quarter. I'm going to try three and a half. I might change my mind. Three and a half by three and a half that we can see here. And then what I've also got is I've got a piece of just some of our green linen cardstock. So I'm going to do myself a matte and layer. So because that one is four and a half by four and a half, we're going to do four and three quarters by four and three quarters. 
finished. You'll see it will go like that. And to save cutting into another piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gut that with my paper trimmer. And I can use what I got for that layer. So let's bring in my paper trimmer here. And I'm not going to do it to a specific frame size. All that I'm going to do is you can see that we've got the three to one inch on my paper trimmer. So if we look onto this side here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to that three quarters of an inch and I'm going to cut and I'm just going to keep twisting and turning. I'm going to twist and turn in actual fact, I don't even think that will fit in the end. So I'm going to have to take another piece because I should have made them a little bit wider. Not to worry. So anyway, at least I've got that to use another time because that's going, yeah, far too, well not far too small, but it's a little bit too small for me to use. So let's bring in another piece of green linen here. And I'm going to move that. Actually, let's just use my trimmer while I've got it. So because I've cut that to three and a half by three and a half, let's do three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So trim there and then there. So that's spot on. So that will, in the end, go around there. And that's how our layer's going to be. Because we're going to do our background on the back, the reason I wanted to kind of have a visual as to what's going to be covered is there's no point stamping and colouring all over into there because it's a waste of time. So at least now I kind of have that guidance as to where I'm stamping and where I'm not. So that will then ultimately go on a... Oh, I've got a 5x5 five five card here. I'm going to trim that to 4x4. Four four. If I bring that into... No, it's not. At 6x6. Six six. I'm trimming it to 5x5. Five five. That's what I'm doing, Craig. So there's that one. And in actual fact, while we're here as well, let's do the insert. So I'm going to use that bit. So whatever the width of that is, I'm going to use. So that's four and a half. So let's cut that to four and a half. And then let's take four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And there we go. So that will be our inserts. We'll do that at the end. Right, so let's bring in our layers here. So that's that, that's that. The other thing that I'm going to do onto a piece of white multi-purpose cardstock is I've got one of my stitched edge nesting dies and it is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I'm just going to roughly chop that and then I'm going to bring in my stamping platform. I'm going to bring in my stamping platform. We're going to pop that down there. We can see here. And we're going to bring in our stamp. Now, although this is white multi-purpose, I'm still using my waterproof ink pad because it's a water-based pen. So I'm still going to be using that. So let's stamp this one out. So let's... Get this into position, press and stamp. So I'm going to be using my Noir Black that we can see here. So let's ink up here. And I know that usually I will do the die cutting and then colour in. However, I am, believe it or not, I'm going to do the colouring first, then I'm going to cut using my nest and die. And there's a reason as to why I'm going to be doing that. So that's that one done. So let's move that out of the way, that out of the way. Let's move that out of the way and then we can discard that. So let's start to colour in our pot here. 
So I'm going to go in, I'm going to take a little bit of scrap just to check colours as I go. So I'm going to go in with the actual watering can that we can see just here. I'm going to go in with that one and colour. Actually, do I want that one or do I want scarlet? Uh, or do I want crimson? No, I'm going to stick, stick with the magenta I am. So I'm just going to work my way round and I am using this pen as a pen to colour. And I know that sounds daft, but I know usually we kind of sometimes will only use our aqua pens as a water-based medium, whereas they are good pens to colour in with on their own accord. So that's exactly what we're going to do with these ones. So we're just going to go and lay this colour down. So within this one here, this is the magenta that we're just going to colour. I'm going to come around the top there and then the top there. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to use the magenta to colour in these roses, so we've got one, we've got two, we've got three, and then we've also got four there as well. Like so that. And I think that is about it for the magenta just now. I'm going to go in with the... What we'll go in with? Let's go in. I'm going to go in here with our marigold. So with the marigold, I'm just going to go into that really, really fine nib. I'm just going to colour in the centre of the daisies and the flowers. There and there. And then we'll, there's some that's just got some of the minute, tiny little detail of the centre. So for that, we're going to add that in. Another one just down into there. I'm going to go in with the bud green. And the bud green is going to go in with the brush nib for now and we're going to colour in all of these leaves. I've missed a tiny little bit from that rose. So let's go and add that bud green in to that one. So I think that is, that's that. Let's just have a quick close look. I think that's pretty much them. What we can then do is then come in with the evergreen. So the evergreen, I'm going to go in with that real fine tip again. I'm just going to come round there on the wheel, on the wheelbarrow. On the watering can. Colour that in. Uh, yeah, let's stick to that finer nib. Gonna colour in these foliage bits, plus you've got little stems. You can just see the little stems that are forming down. So I'm just gonna work my way around or down the stems. And then there's one here, like so there, and then I think that's pretty much that I've missed 
a little bit of the bud green so there's a leaf just there in the background could go back in with that bud green just along the top there I'm going to go in with the crimson and just colour in that heart into there and then I'm going to take the slate and I'm just going to go in with that fine little nib and then all that I'm going to do is just around so I'm not going all the way around the inner of the actual um, petal I'm just going on the, the inner just on the inside so we're just going to go in and I'm just going to come round just with that centre part of the daisy I'm just going to go from the centre and pull it out centre and pull out and I'm just going to Dot around the small daisies, just roughly. Dot around, dot around, and then dot around. And then still with that slate, I'm just going to come around. And that's pretty much all that I'm going to do when it comes to that. But then what I am going to do is with the illustrator pen, so I'm going to go with that finer nib and I'm going to draw around. Now, I know some of you might think, well, is that not waterproof ink pad that you've just used and you're now going around with a water-based pen? And you are correct. But as long as you go semi-quick, and that's the fact you don't even need to go quick, as long as you're not applying a lot of pressure or blend with the alcohol pen on the water-based ink line, you're going to be absolutely fine. So we're just going to go into the centre as well. So where we've got these little centre bits. I'm just going to come in. I'm just going to draw all the way around. So essentially what I usually do with the ice grey too, this is exactly what I'm doing. I just thought it made a nice little bit of a difference using the blue instead of the grey. So, twisting and turning. And then that is all that I'm going to do when it comes to that. What I am going to do, however, I think I've got just a white gel pen here just on the love heart there just creating that natural highlight that you can see and then there we go we've got our coloured image then what we're going to do is let's die cut that out so I'm going to put my circle die around the edge I'm going to come along and I'm using just wash your tape, just want to try and use that all up. We're going to then tape that in and tape that down. I'm not going to use my magnetic shim for this because it won't I won't need it because it's a nice simplistic die, so therefore I won't need that full entire pressure. So we're going to run that one through. And then as that one comes through, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in water reactive ink pad I'm going to use the grasshopper so let's bring this one back in move that out the way and then what I'm going to do so let's just leave that in I'm going to take my blending tool and then I'm just going to come around the edge ever so slightly just a little bit not too much because I don't want to coat and cover 
the whole of what I've just done. I'm only wanting the very edge. And by using or keeping the die in place, what will happen is I'll create a bit of a white halo. So let's move that out the way. There and there. And then if I pop that out the way, there we go. We're left with that white halo all the way around. We've got all our colouring done. A little bit of the grasshopper blend all the way around, which is what a reactive. And then we've got our white halo that you can see. And that's my topper. That's my topper all done. And then to clean that, just a little wipe or microfiber cloth, something like that, just to take all that excess ink off. And then that's the topper. So then what we're going to do is let's bring in our smaller square that we've cut to three and a half by three and a half. Now for this, you can use your small stamping platform if you want to. But if you know me, you know me by now that when it comes to our smaller stamps, I do like to use my small acrylic block. So I'm going in with the love heart here. And then I'm just going to randomly stamp all the way around that you can see here I'm just going to randomly stamp to start with like so let's add a bit there and a bit there let's take that topper and see how far I need to come in so if I can pick that up so I can see there so in actual fact, maybe down in this corner here. Maybe a little one, just peeping out that corner there. And that's enough. That is more than enough. So, that being said, let's move that out of the way. Let's move that out of the way. And then let's take that off. Now for this one, when it comes to this one, what we're going to do is we're going to take our, I don't want the, I can't decide on the crimson or the scarlet, yeah, crimson. So for the crimson, what we're going to do is we're going to colour all of these in. So nothing overly specific, we're just going to go all the way round and we're going to colour in all of the love hearts because we've got that flexible nib we're going to get a lot of quick coverage like so Let's bring that into there that into there And then we're just going to keep going all the way around. I should say as well, because I don't think I've said this to date on these Advent Calendar videos. If you are new to watching these, then I don't edit them. So what I do is what you see. So therefore, if I've got a lot of colour in like I need to do here. That's exactly what you're going to see, a lot of colouring. Uh, the good thing with that is it does mean that you can then quite literally craft along in real time because you're not going to miss anything or I'm not going to edit bits out. So we're just going to keep going all the way around. All the way into place here. Bring that one in. Work that around. Let's bring that in. Let's 
like so. so. So that's them. We're going to go back in to our pearl blue and we're going to do what I've done with the actual bouquet. So we're going to draw around with the blue. Just round that outer edge. And just like the ice grey, this blue will still get just a little bit lighter. Not too much, but it'll get a little bit lighter. And we're just going to follow all of that. I'm going to keep going around till we get to the end. And then let's work it around, following like so and the good thing as well is it when you're drawn around them you don't have to be overly neat you can be quite quick and sketchy there we go if we bring that one in you'll then see that's then going to sit onto there. Also, what I'm going to do, just with a white gel pen, just to the side, and just very quickly and quite simply sketchy, sketching. And that one. And that one. Just with a white gel pen, it just creates that little bit of lift that we can see there. So that's our next layer, which is then going to go onto there. And then what we're going to do is let's bring in our next largest layer, which is four and a half by four and a half. And then we're going to bring in our little flower stamp. And we're going to do the same here. So we're just going to then Stamp around, twisting and turning. As we go around, and this outer frame doesn't have to be too detailed. Let's just bring that in. Now in, pop a bit up into there, and then let's just bring, yeah, that's fine. While I'm here, what I'm also going to do, just on another piece of white multi-purpose cardstock, I'm going to stamp the flower out four times. Like that. And then I'm going to take the love heart and I'm going to do the love heart twice. There, actually, I don't like that. That love heart there, I um, squidged it. So let's do the love hearts again. Because we will use the die to die cut these ones out. Let me just cut them away. So I'll set them ones to the side for now. Move all that out of the way and all that out of the way. And then for this one, the outer edge, we're going to use the bud green again. And we're going to colour in the leaves in bud green. So we're just going to go in on all the leaves. And again, I'm using the brush nib. You can use 
the finer one if you want to. We're just going to colour each of these ones in. And then the other one we're going to use once again, well, we're going, we're going to colour these the same way as we've done the bouquet. So we're going to take the orange tone, the Magolia, no, not Marigold. I'm going to use the Marigold for the centre and then the slate to just draw around the inner petal. So there's that one. Let's take the Marigold. I'm just going to go in with that little fine nib. And colour. All the way around. Like so. And then we'll go the slate. So again, the slate, I'm just going to go in with that fine nib. And then I'm just going to go, actually I'm not, I'm going to go with the brush nib and just kind of do little flicking actions. And I'm doing it anti-clockwise. Yeah. You can do it clockwise. There's no rhyme nor reason as to why I'm doing it in the direction I'm going. It's just and a little bit of inner highlight on the petal. There you go. So there's that. And then last but by no means least, let's bring back in our pearl blue. And we're going to draw around these. It really does make a difference. Just spending that bit of time going around the pearl blue. Or what you could do is another shade of blue. If you don't have pearl blue, a light blue would work. And a nice blue, an ice blue would work. And I'm keeping this framework quite light all the way around. But you could go in and you could stamp some more flowers, really fill it out if you want to. I don't think it needs filled out this frame because we've got a lot on the other frames. So we're just going to keep going. And then before we assemble the card, the only thing we need to do is just colour in those flowers and the hearts that are separate that were just stamped out a moment or two ago. So finishing off, working around, going all the way around into this last one. And there, you can see that one. So then that is how our layers are going to come together. And we can see here and then into here. So the only thing we need to do is let's bring in these ones. So let's bring in the, was it the crimson I used? Yeah. So I'm just going to, colour in the love hearts. So I just need two with the love hearts and four with the flowers. And let's bring that in. And then for this one, we're just going to do exactly the same. So bud green for the leaves. And I will still go around with the pearl blue, but I'm not going to do it just yet because 
the chances are if I go around it just now, then die cut it, I'll still need to go around it again because I'll have missed some bits of the white. So I'm going to wait till I've cut it. So let's go in the marigold. And we're going to do the same with the slate. I'm just going to tickle the edges of the petals. Like so. so. And then that is those. Let's just bring in that white gel pen again. Just sketch in. Just a very quick sketch. And then these ones, we're going to chop up cut and then let's die cut these out so I'm going to bring in my tape so I'm just going to line that up press that in and then we're going to line that up move it into place Tape that down. Now for these, I could of course use a G2, but I'm just going to use my mini for these, because you could pretty much use your mini for all of what's in the calendar this year. So let's take that off our next love heart. Tape that down, and then we're going to repeat. So lots of kind of technique layers within this one. Feed that through. So that's the love hearts done. So I can put that out the way. And then we can do the last two of the flowers. So if I overlay that into there and into there. Pop that one out. And then last but by no means least, let's bring in... That one into there. And cut that one out. So now that that's there all cut, and I know that width all the way round, let's just take our pen again. So I'm just going to use the brush nib. And then we can then just go around each of these ones you can see into there so following that around we're doing that on all of them including the love hearts like that work that round round the outer edge And then what we can then do is if we come in with that one, do the same again. And then last but by no means least with the two hearts, we're just going to work it round with the brush nib. Not only that, I'm going to do the last one and then that is all of our layers done ready to assemble so we've got all these cut we've got all of our main layers done so then all that we need to do 
is start to assemble our card. So I'm going to do, let's, seeing as I've got the insert now, or the inserts ready, let's do the insert. So I'm just going to go around with my tape, bringing in our layer that we've already cut with the green linen. Let's just take these ones. In case you're wondering as well, there's no rhyme, no reason as to why I go all the way around or I go into strips. I do, it, I do it without thinking about it, so there's no specific reason. In case you wonder why am I going lengthways one way and going all the way around the other, there's no reason. There we go, that's that one. So if I take that out for the middle, and that's my insert done. Then we can then come along and let's build up these layers. So work our way round. So some we're going to keep flat, some we are going to pop on the foam pads. in position that one into there so this one we will actually this one in the next one will keep flat on foam pads keep flat on foam pads doesn't make sense Craig how can you keep it flat on foam pads keep flat with our tape let's bring this one back in Let's then position that one into there and press. Let's come in with this layer here. So this layer will stay flat with our tape. Let's put that one on, that one on, and that one on. that in, press that on and that one can then go flat, so it's going to go into the middle, took some of the tape off there, didn't mean to, that can just sit into there, this one it's going to go on foam pads. Now it's going to sit into there. Yep. And then these ones, what we're going to do is these are going to stay relatively flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of space that to the side there. Let's bring in my little thingy my bobby, a little bit of wire. That's going to go into there. That's going to press into there. Hold that going to do the same down into here. So that one, I'm going to pop flat there. This one is going to go flat onto there. And then to finish off, last thing but by no means least, let's bring in couple of square pads that can then just go into that join there and that can go into that join there and then there we go. God, it looks like the colour's going on my screen here, isn't it? 
there we go. We have got our five by five. That colour's definitely gone on my screen there. I wonder what's going on. Anyway, there we go. Five by five. I wonder if you'll see it. There we go. I wonder what's going on with my camera screen there. There we go. So we've got all of our colours all coloured in. Five by five card. We've got some layers going on. We've got some depth going on that we can see there. I've got created a little bit of a highlight when it comes to the hearts. I'm going to go a little bit closer so you can see that colour that little bit better. You can see just there. There we go. I don't know what's going on with that colour there. We'll get that sorted for tomorrow night. That is for sure. Uh, but there we go. Door number three from our advent calendar. So that gives us our floral bouquet within that watering can. It gives us a little floral in the die stamp. And also the love heart with the die in the stamp as well. And that's what you can make. Turn it into easel card, stepper card, twisted, e twisted easel. You can do box lid. There's lots of different ways you can make it bigger. Really start to stamp out the background and make it onto a bigger card, of course. That's entirely up to yourself. But that, uh, and then you can come in with your glitters and your glitter glues and your glossy highlights and all these different things that you'll be able to uh, start to incorporate. But I hope you enjoyed that one as well. Hope you really enjoyed that one. Bringing in lots of colour in there, bringing in all the layers as well creating that framework and that background with the stamp and then using the die as well just to enhance them that little bit more. But that is it now for door number three. I wonder what's going to be behind door number four. Well, the only way that you're going to find out is to come back here tomorrow when it comes to our Crafter's Companion Advent Calendar reveal right here on my Crafter's Companion YouTube channel. So we'll see you then. See you then. Bye.